Hello everyone, I'm Michaela Kathleen and I'm here today with my September reading wrap-up. I read three books in September, but really I only read one book because I DNF'd two books this month, so that's unfortunate. But jumping in, the first book that I read for the month was The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. And this one I did not DNF. This one is highly conceptual. The premise is that unwritten books go to hell. And so our main character is the librarian of unwritten books in hell. And I really liked this concept. It was super fun, super bookish, and it was more extensive than I thought going into it. I really liked the concept that basically all creative thoughts go somewhere, even if they aren't completed by the person who has them bubbling away inside. So that was just a really nice thought for a, you know, creative person. It drew a lot, I think, on like all sorts of kind of afterlife mythology in this world. All versions of the afterlife that humans have thought of exist. So we get to see Valhalla, get to see some heaven and hell. So in that way it kind of gave me Good Omens vibes and also The Last Roman vibes. So it was definitely a lot of concepts that were all really interesting, but like overall I wasn't as invested as I thought I would be considering the kind of concepts of the book. There was nothing wrong with it, it was well written, I just wasn't as into it as I would have thought I would be. There was just something missing. I wasn't like super in love with any of the characters, which probably didn't help. Which again is not to say that the character work was bad, I just wasn't super invested. One bad element of the character work I felt though was the accents. A lot of the characters seemed to have accents, but they were all very inconsistent. And I love a good accent in a book. I love when a character is written in a way that you can tell what they sound like, but it's gotta be consistent and none of these characters had consistent accents. So yeah, overall a book with a really interesting concept, but something about it just fell slightly flat for me. Like I enjoyed it, but it was also just only like three, three and a half stars for me. But I am planning to continue with the series at some point. So yeah, that was the first and kind of last book that I read in September. The next book I started was Independent People by Haldor Laxness, which I talked about this in last week's unhaul video because I am going to be unhauling this video or er, this book. And in that video, I wasn't sure if I was going to finish the book. I was still kind of in the middle of it. I will report now that I did not finish the book. I made it about a hundred more pages and then I ended up DNFing it after all. So I made it about halfway through the book. I was strangely intrigued by the book, even though it was very slow and boring, and I also didn't like a lot of what was happening in it. It's very much like a slice of life type of book that takes place over a big time span. It was written in the 50s, it takes place in the early 1900s, and so a lot of like vaguely sexist portrayals of women in the book. <laughs> I don't think any of it was inaccurate for the time that it takes place. My real problem with it was the first wife of the main character behaves very strangely and it's not great portrayal, which like it's fine if you give a reason for why that character is behaving the way that they're behaving. But the fact that it's just like, oh here's this crazy lady look at her be crazy. I was like, well, can we get an explanation for why she's behaving this way? Can we get some backstory? But no, she's just crazy. <laughs> the sexualization of the main character's daughter, Asta Sililja, from the age of like 12 is super creepy, very disturbing. There was, at the point where I stopped reading, there seemed like there was maybe some light grooming happening. It was a lot not great. But at the same time, I just kept being vaguely intrigued by the book. Even though nothing was happening, it was really slow, and what was happening I wasn't really vibing with. But I did eventually figure out why I was vaguely intrigued, I think. 
which I think helped me kind of DNF it because I was like, okay, that's why it's holding my attention and that's not enough of a reason. And that was that I feel like it had slightly similar vibes to The First Girl Child by Amy Harmon, which is a five star book that I love very much. <laughs> the main character's daughter had kind of similar vibes to one of the main characters from The First Girl Child and just they're both first girl child is a fantasy book so it's very like takes place in a like time and place that doesn't have technology like this does and maybe like the writing styles were maybe a little bit similar so i think that's what was kind of holding my attention also fun side note so i got this from the bibliophilic excursions subscription box which is a box that each month is themed around a different country. So this month was Iceland, so I got this book as my fiction book, and then for like nonfiction, I got Icelandic folk tales. And this book references one of the folk tales that was in that book. So I went and reread that folk tale, partly because it was one of my favorite ones in the book, the the folk of folk tales. So that was kind of fun, the connection between the two books that were in that one subscription box. But yeah, I made it halfway through and it was just taking so long, I could not spend any more time on it. And also there was like a foreword at the beginning that tells everything that happens in the book anyways. So I do know what happened even though I didn't read the whole thing. And then finally this month, I also tried reading The Cellar by Natasha Preston. This one, I only got 50 pages in. I had already DNF'd this one and I, went to this one, went about 50 pages, said this is very poor writing, and went back to this one for a while, which I talked about in that wrap-up last week. So yeah, I don't have a lot of thoughts on this one. I did kind of skim through the rest of the book just to kind of see like, okay, what happens? But yeah, this one, it was just a case of very poor writing. Was not interested in continuing at all. So yeah, those are the three books that I kind of read in September. Next month I am starting the King of Scars duology by Leigh Bardugo, so October will be a much better reading month. <laughs> Let me know down below what you read in September, if you're planning any spooky or Halloween themed books for October. I hope you enjoyed watching. Remember, words matter.